Uh, so welcome everybody to Trent University's virtual winter open house. Uh, we're very excited today to welcome you to the financial science and mathematics session. My name is Lucy Connolly and I'll be moderating this session and with me today I have Dr Wesley Burr who is an associate professor in the department of mathematics uh, as well as Molly Patrick who's a second year mathematics and teacher education stream student and Andrew Mackay who's a fourth year math major computer science minor student. Um, so we're very excited to hear you all today and um, we look forward to sharing all the reasons why Trent has been ranked the number one undergraduate University of Ontario for 11 consecutive years. Um, during the session, you can ask questions in the chat and at the end of the session we'll have a short question and answer period uh, with the members of our panel, so I do invite you to add any questions you might have in the chat box, which is at the bottom of your screen. Uh, the presentation is being offered with closed captioning today, um, so if you need to enable closed captioning, you can select the three dots on the bottom right of your screen and select show subtitles and hopefully that will pop up on your screen for you. Uh, on our events page today, you'll see that there are quite a few live chats going on, um, so you can drop into one the way you think it makes sense to you if you have any questions and get those questions answered. Um, or we also have, new this year, um, a little chat bot on the main page, and there are lots of people staffing that one and getting questions for you there as well. So I think we'll get started with our presentation, so it's up to the, over to you. Thank you. Um, and I will say, um, John came in there too, he wasn't labeled, but uh, this is John Taubum. He's an assistant professor in our department as well. Uh, and so I am a statistician in the department. Uh, speak, you put your microphone on. There we go. Um, I, I am a statistician, so I do applied work in statistics and that's my research area. And John is, uh, sorry, one sec. Let's see. Thank you. Uh, and, and John does pure mathematics and is in the algebra group. So uh, is like 54 or an hour long. Like you're like, okay, let me have this one. Maybe we should set it so people yeah, auto mute it as they join because they don't seem to realize. There we go. Um, Sorry, the feedback is loud enough. Um, so we're, we're a fairly small department as most departments are at Trent. Um, there's nine faculty members in the department and we offer one sort of degree directly and then an additional degree in conjunction with three other departments, which is the financial science. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And then we have several specializations within the degree, which is the bachelor's in mathematics. And uh, I think I'll let John tell you a little bit more about the math program that we offer as he is the mathematician. And then I'll tell you a little bit about financial science. And then we have two lovely students here who are in our program who can give you a little bit of information about what it's like to be a student at Trent in our department. So John, can I hand it over to you to tell them a little bit more about the sort of pure math courses and how that's all working? Sure, thanks Wes, can you hear me okay? Okay, great. Right, so um, Wesley was saying that he's in statistics and I'm in algebra. And uh, I mean, if you know a little bit about math, you might put us uh, kind of at the opposite ends of the spectrum there. Um, when we look at things as sort of being pure math or applied math. Um, and uh, just to kind of to give you a bit of information about that, I mean, it, it's not really drawing a line in the sand that there's only pure and there's only applied math. It's, it's really, uh, they go hand in hand. And sort of the difference between the two really is um, the, the way we approach uh, studying math or why we study math. The applied uh, mathematics sort of um, attempts to do research in math to um, solve real world problems. And, uh, oh, we got a hoodie uh, draw going, I see that. And, and uh, th whereas the pure mathematician really is studying math for its own right to, to develop more mathematics and to solve problems within math. And that's not to say that applied mathematicians don't do pure math in their endeavors. And that it's, it's also not to say that pure math that has no real world applications either. Um, so um, in, in, in any case, you may find that you um, like sort of more uh, applied than pure or more pure than applied. Um, but uh, there, we, we offer a range of courses at Trent. And from the pure math side, um, I can tell you about the courses that I teach. Um, we have a, an algebra stream. So we have linear algebra one, linear algebra two, and then we have a abstract algebra course called uh, group theory. And then another one, um, uh, called rings and fields. And then uh, we also have a calculus stream. We have uh, calculus one, two, three, and four. And 
Um, we, we also offer some other uh, pure math uh, at, at a higher level. We have uh, complex analysis, real analysis. We have a discrete math um, uh, stream as well with uh, graph theory and uh, combinatorics. So, and uh, we, we've had uh, uh, geometry classes as well in the past. So um, there's a, a broad spectrum of math that you can take and coming out of high school, you've, you've maybe only taken sort of the uh, math at, at your grade level and progress that way. But once you get to university, you get to uh, choose a bit more. Um, I won't speak to the uh, applied math courses as much because I don't know as much about them, but with, with applied math, um, your chances of getting a job after graduation uh, are much higher because you're, you're looking at things that you can actually do uh, after you graduate from university. If you were to go the pure math route like I did, you're looking more at um, teaching or academia. There are some research positions that uh, you could uh, maybe do as work afterwards. Um, for, for example, I know uh, somebody who did a pure math in, um, in, disc in discrete math they studied sequences over finite fields, and they went on to uh, work for the government of Canada at CSEC doing cryptography. Um, so uh, in, in any case, I, I just wanted to point out that uh, you, you get to choose a kind of different courses that you like, and you'll, you'll take some basic ones at the beginning, and you'll sort of branch out from there, and you, you see what you like as you go. But there's, there's really no need to cut yourself off from one or the other. You can, um, you know, do a bit of pure, a bit of applied, and then figure it out as you go. But um, as I said, we, we use the same math in, in both uh, sections anyway. I know Wes in his statistics course is using linear algebra, which is, which is what I teach. And he certainly uses calculus as well. So um, anyway, I, I don't know if I have much more to say about that, but um, one of the benefits I would like to point out about Trent is um, our small class sizes. And uh, a lot of the students uh, can attest to this. It's, it, they really appreciate um, having the, the intimate atmosphere. And we have a really nice um, math lounge in our math department where students will come together and discuss problems. And I've seen um, sort of the more senior students helping out the junior students and things like that. And uh, it's a really nice open atmosphere. It, it, it doesn't feel like competitive and, and uh, it's, it's really collegiate. People are helping each other out. And I, I would say that this is a kind of a unique thing for Trent. Um, I, I'm sure other schools are, are uh, friendly in this way as well, but I've also seen the opposite at, at larger schools too, um, where it can get more competitive. And uh, it, it has been a really friendly experience here for me um, si since I've started working here, so I can say that. Anyway, Wes, I think I'll turn it over to you for, for some applied math. <laughs> okay, and, and so what I'd like to sort of give, give you folks, you're coming from high school, and as John said, like you're used to just taking what you've been told to take or you, you're looking at programs you're applying for, if you take the prerequisites for those programs and you don't get a lot of choice. But when you hit, once you hit university, if that doesn't go away completely. And in your first year at Trent, if you're a math major or a mathematical physics major or whatever, um, you will have courses you have to take, like calculus. You have to take calculus if you're gonna proceed in the more technically oriented streams, whether that's chemistry or physics or math or, or computer science. But then once you hit second year, you start to get more choices. And, and then in third year, you're almost entirely open and you get to choose what you wanna take across the board. And that's where the differentiation really comes in. Because if you end up focusing on statistics and we have a specialization in statistics, it's like a minor. So you get a math degree with a specialization tacked on top of it you only start making decisions about your courses to go down that stream in your third year. And similarly, the same is true for mathematical economics, although you have to plan a little bit more for that one because you have to take econ courses as you go along. And that sort of is our applied groups is that once you hit the end of second year, you've had exposure. You've taken calculus, you've taken algebra, you've taken one statistics class, you have probability. You have the background to take any of our streams. And that's the point where you get to pick and choose. And we have a, a tremendous amount of flexibility, far more than you would expect from a small school just because of how we designed our courses. And to, to chime in on what John said about employment, um, we are extremely proud of this. 100% of our graduates are employed within six months of graduation. And that's held for a number of years. Now that partially is because employment counts as they become a teacher. They're going to bachelor's of education and they're going to become a teacher or they've gone to graduate school or they have a job. But uh, in all of the labor surveys that we've done of our graduates, 100% have found gainful employment within six months. And that's really quite nice. You're not going to graduate and go, oh, no, I can't get a job with the credentials I've gotten. Math degrees are valuable. 
And so that connects to our other program that we offer through our department, which is co-offered with the Departments of Economics, the School of Business, and courses from the School of, or not the School of Computing, but the Department of Computing Science, and that is financial science. And that's a fairly new program. Uh, it was only introduced three years ago, and so the first group of students are still working their way through the first four-year cohort, um, but it's an extremely exciting program. It's um, very, very well regarded in terms of its rigor. So it's an extremely challenging and um, complete program. The graduates are going to be exceptionally qualified for the job market, and we're really looking forward to seeing where they land as they graduate. And we've just launched a co-op option for that program, one of Trent's first. And so there were already a couple, but now we're, we've got the co-op option approved by the ministry for this. And so with the co-op option for financial science, you have the option to take the co-op stream or not. And if you take the co-op stream, three of your semesters in the 12 semesters from the moment you start till the moment you graduate will be spent out in the workforce making money, gaining valuable experience, and seeing what is available for graduates of your program. And you have to apply for that program from high school, but you can also switch into it if you switch in early enough to be able to pull off the three semesters spent away from Trent. And to start, it's your first summer. So you have to make the decision before your first summer at university, because that's when the co-ops start. And the co-ops are a little bit competitive. They do have a higher grade requirement than the regular program, um, but we're extremely excited about it. We have a lot of banks and insurance companies and finance companies really, really interested in having our graduates come and visit them. Connected to that, we've also just launched an internship option within our math degree. And what that is, it's not a full-fledged co-op, it's not as, as rigorous and requiring that you spend so much time away, but it's the option to take an internship course in your third year summer, and you go off and you, and you have an arranged placement with an employer for that summer. You work, you gain really valuable experience, and you get a credit for it in your degree, which is the internship credit. And we've launched that and we've had it approved, and we're trying to arrange the first set of internships for this coming summer. So if you come to Trent, that will be an option that's already set up that you can certainly pursue. And on top of that, we have a lot of sort of placement-y things, uh, community-based research projects, our thesis projects sometimes end up there, and summer research, where um, the best of our students have the opportunity to spend the summer working with a faculty member on a research project paid uh, for the duration of the 16 weeks over the summer term. So this is our program. We have the degree in mathematics, the specializations in statistics and, and uh, economics. There's also the mathematical economics degree. And there is on top of that, our financial science degree, which is now working its way through its first set of cohorts. So these are the programs we offer. There are the co-op streams. So if you are looking at UAC and you're looking at the things, you kind of can see that there's all these sort of sub things you can select. Almost all of those can be selected after the fact if you decide to come to Trent. So if you come to Trent and you take the math degree and you realize that the financial science sounds interesting, but you really weren't sure about it back in high school, if you choose the right electives in your first year, you can change into financial science at the end of your uh, first year. Uh, Gregory has a question, uh, describe some of the courses. So financial science is about 50% math, 25% economics, 25% business. And so in first year, you take all the same math courses that Andrew and Molly did. All the math courses that a math major would take. Calculus one, calculus two, linear algebra, probability. But then on top of those courses, you take economics one and two, micro and macroeconomics, and you take accounting one and accounting two, and you take a computing course and you get one elective. And then in second year, you take almost the same courses as Andrew and Molly, and you take more calculus, statistics, more linear algebra, more probability, and more economics. And then in third year, it starts to open up and you take courses in mathematical finance, in portfolio design and risk analysis, in econometrics, which is the mathematical study of economic systems. And in business, you start getting into business management and courses that are related to the stock market and are understanding how finance systems work. And then more statistics. And I, I sort of tack those on at the end because those are the ones I teach. So I, I just kind of assume that they're there. And then in fourth year, it opens up even again. And what you have are capstone courses. And so you have a final finance course from math, a final economics course from the Department of Economics, and two final business courses from the School of Business that really get you connected to the world of finance, 
courses on derivatives and courses on financial management. So learning how to manage portfolios for clients if you wanted to become a professional, um, I forget what their name is, sorry, it's escaped my mind, but the guy you would go to at a financial institution, a bank or an insurance company who would help you with your portfolio. They're called financial advisors and the difference between an advisor with an ER and an advisor with an OR is different, but I don't remember which one is which and I'd have to look it up. One of them is credentialed and one of them isn't. And it's silly, but that's how it works. So financial science has a lot of required courses. That's the one thing about that degree is that um, it has the highest number of required courses of any program at Trent across the board. Like the, the courses are set and you take them and you have to take them to graduate. You get the least number of electives but you graduate with one of the strongest degrees we've ever created. And the employers look at what you know, these students are covering and, and they're waiting for the first cohort to graduate so they can hire all of them. And we were told by the external people who came in to evaluate the program when we proposed it, that it is the strongest program they've seen. And it is extremely strong. It will be challenging. I don't try and deny that. You have to be able to hack a math degree with economics and business tacked on top of it but you will gain a huge amount of skills. We're, we're getting tons of funding. So we're, we're setting up a new lab specifically for this program. You're gonna gain experience using Bloomberg terminals for deal, dealing with the stock market and the, and the commodities markets. You'll gain a tremendous amount of statistical skills. You'll learn to program in five different languages so that you can do data analytics for finance. It's, it's just this huge, exciting program and the students who are in it are gonna have a great time. And so again, if it sounds interesting to you, but you're not sure, but you are coming to Trent. If you're in the math degree, you can switch into financial science for second year, so long as you take those right prerequisites in the options for your first year. So a typical math major at Trent only has four courses required in the first year of the 10 that they take. The other six are up to them. If you select those correctly, you can then switch into financial science or switch into mathematical economics at your second year without any penalty, without slowing you down, without losing out on any time. And so if, if any of you are wondering about that and trying to make decisions, but you know you're coming to Trent, feel free to email me. I will help you set up your courses and make sure that you're in the right stuff so that you have that flexibility at the end of your first year to go, you know what? No, no, I, I want to be in, in math. But finance really isn't for me. Or I want to do the finance. That seemed really cool. And I want to go down that path. So that's what we're going to say. We're happy to take more questions at the end, but... Um, Sorry, there's one more question. Reduce course load and take longer. You can. And the advantage of that is that you then have more flexibility with the co-op. You can absolutely do a five-year program with co-op attached and take the co-op in different semesters. But some of the prerequisites are kind of tricky. So if you did want to do that, please come talk to the, the chair of math. It will be me as of July so we can help you. Because if you mess up a year, it could cost you a lot of time because the courses have to come in sequence. And you could, you could sort of trap yourself in a corner where you can't take the courses the next year because they're just not set up right. So you absolutely can do it. There's lots of flexibility, but it does take some finagling. So please do seek out help. Um, I think on our list, Molly, uh, Lucy, we, we said that we were going to have Andrew and Molly have a chance to talk. Is that right? Uh, sorry, you're muted. So I assume you... <laughs> sorry, rookie that. mistake. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, we'd love to hear from the students as well. But thank you. That was a fantastic overview of the program. Lots and lots of information there. Um, with the co-ops and the internships, I know you said you're sort of in the process of setting these up. So do you have anything lined up? Do you anticipate that students will have to take these sort of in the Peterborough area? Or is it going to be a lot wider? Can they take it closer to home, wherever home is? Uh, at the moment, we are trying to find the local ones for the internships because it's just one semester. For the co-ops, we're spreading our net wider. Um, students will be able to select a geographic area. And what we expect is that most students will say, I would like a co-op in Peterborough, where I live, or where my family lives, wherever that might be. And so if you have family in the greater Toronto area and you wanna try and live with your uncle and aunt or your parents, if they're in the GTA for four months while you do that, then that's certainly an option. But we would never try and make someone sign up for a co-op in a place where they don't have the ability to live because that's really inconvenient. Um, having said that, my experience with co-op programs says, if you wanna go co-op, you have to be a little bit flexible and be, be able to kind of dynamically switch your living arrangements because if you get a great opportunity and you wanna take it, but it requires that you be in downtown Toronto, you can't commute to downtown Toronto from Peterborough. I mean, you could try, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. No. So, so what we're trying to do is find enough locals that if everybody wanted to stay local, they could, but have that flexibility. If you're from Ottawa 
then we'll try and find some placements and connections in Ottawa so you could go home and live at home and do your co-op for four months and then come back to school. Okay. Um, so that, that's the current plan. It's our, it's our first cohort right now. I'm, I'm talking to employers and we're arranging it for the first like three people who wanted to do it. But this incoming first year is our first full year of we will have co-op across the board for those who wanted to take it. And those people will be set up for, what is it, summer of 2023 to be okay. able to be the first wave of full co-op will be going out. So I'm guessing you meet with them pretty early on to see where their interests might lie and where they might like to be. Oh yeah, they have to, uh, they, they would be interviewing for co-ops in February, March. And so the, the, the early placement sort of stuff would happen in the fall. And then in, in January, we kind of make the list and say, okay, who's met the prereqs? And then the interviews get, start getting set up and they start arranging their placements. And this aligns with the other universities. Waterloo's um, co-op terms for the summer are interviewing right now. Um, I know this because my spouse works for a company that's hiring co-op students from Waterloo as part of their internship program. And she did 11 interviews last week. With the <laughs> wow. students. And keep that in mind for co-op. It's, it's not an assignment. It's not, I take you and I put you into place. It's, I tell you this is eligible and you apply for it and get interviewed. They're all competitive. And so you could want something, but if they don't like you, you have to, you have to be flexible and you kind of have to apply for a bunch of different options. So keep that in mind. It's not just a like, I tell you you're going to work at CIBC for the semester. <laughs> Good to know. Let's, uh, let's hand it over to the students. So let's hear from you too. Maybe um, Molly first. So uh, Molly, what do you love about your program? Um, I really enjoy the small classroom sizes. Like my whole first year was all online. So I had never really had big math classes, which I think was kind of a blessing because I like having the small interactive classes. So I think that's really a benefit of coming to Trend um, and being in the math program. But you're also taking teacher education at the same time, is that right? Yes, I am. So the teacher education stream, I take one course per semester and I get to do a placement for that as well. So um, yeah, I have, that's all online actually right now, but. I've gotten lots of experience from doing placements through the education stream, so. And the two things combine pretty well, I would guess. Yeah. Um, uh, so Andrew, maybe we should turn it over to you as well. And what do you have um, in terms of advice for anybody planning to come and study at Trent? Uh, I guess the number one piece of advice I would give is get involved early. Um, just as early as possible, even in first year, like everyone said, the nice thing about Trent is, and the math department, is it's small and you can get on a first name basis with professors and that could be, could make it easier to find internships and co-op and maybe even summer research positions um, and just make a name for yourself. You definitely can at Trent where at other universities where there's 20,000 students or so, there's so much more, you can't do that where at Trent, you are a big fish in a small pond, I think the saying goes. So just get involved, whether that's through the math club, um, like coming to the resource room in Zowski College, like um, like Wes said, it's a very welcoming environment. And um, there's definitely people there to help and give you advice on anything math or just life related even. And so you're taking computer science as your minor. Um, so was that going back to the flexibility of the program? Was that something you knew right from the beginning or did you decide part way through? Yeah, I actually, I think I decided in my, the first semester of my third year when I was selecting courses, I kind of saw the path I was going. I knew I wanted to go the statistics route and the programming side. So I knew I had a few computer science credits that I took as electives in first year. Um, and yeah, it was after that point, I decided, okay, any elective I get, I um, it'll be computer science related. Okay, got you. Um, so we've only got five or so more minutes left, and I don't think uh, we've got any more questions in the chat right now. Uh, yeah. Oh, so there's one. How many students are there in the financial science program? And I see we've got an answer. The first cohort was five and the second was nine. So aiming to get it up to 20 to 25 every year. Perfect. Yeah, there will never be more than 40 students in the program. That's what we've said as our, as our cap. Um, we launched this new program and we were very excited about it. And then March 2020 rolled around right as we were recruiting for the first cohort and everything in the world changed. And right. so only a few students came that first year and we've seen growth already. We're expecting with the co-op, we will, we will be um, over 20 
this coming year because there's been a tremendous amount of interest now that we have the co-op option. Um, but it's you still still what Molly said is very valid. You will not take many courses, especially not in the math department. You will not take any courses past second year with more than 25 students. Right. So there's a there's a bit of growth, but you know the largest class I've ever taught in third and fourth year was 20. <clears throat> Presumably because um, you're specializing sort of downwards, everything gets more specialized and particular as you get further through the program. Yeah, and there, there's, there's program, like our, our first year courses are large, like at any university in Canada, it's, that's just the function of the fact that you come in and you, you start big and then you shrink. Um, and so calculus, for example, will be 250 students. Uh, the, some of the statistics courses are even bigger. I have, I have 600 students in the first year, first semester statistics course. Uh, but by the time you get to second year, you're down to less than 50. And that's just because we still have computer science and physics sharing courses with us. And in third year, you're down to the math majors. And, you know, Andrew is in one of my courses right now, and we have 14 people. So it's, it's very intimate, and everyone gets to know the professors very quickly because uh, there's not very many of us. And so that has some downsides. If you don't show up to class, we know, we can <laughs> see you're not able to hide in the back row. Um, but on the same token, we know your names, we know your faces, you know us, and our office doors are often open, you can come by, and it's a very, very nice atmosphere that you will not get at a large school, not because they don't want to do it, but because they, they functionally can't. I have colleagues at University of Toronto, and um, they teach eight parallel sections of the course that I am currently teaching with 14 students, each of which is 250. Wow. But they, they teach 2,000 students a year where I teach 14. Uh, and so that that's the difference, right? And you will not get to know your professors if you go to University of Toronto. That's the, the nature of it. And perhaps, you know, the, the name means something to you, but the quality of education will not be any higher. And you will not get to know your professors the way that we are able to do. Perfect. Thank you so much. So I think we're just about at the end of the presentation. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in from the chat. Um, but thank you very much uh, to all the members of the panel for being with us today and sharing all their knowledge. Um, the session has been recorded and it'll be posted to the Open House webpage um, some point next week if you need to come back and look at the session again. Um, we're also advertising today, we are now hold, um, going to be holding in-person open house events in the spring. So the Peterborough campus one will be on the Saturday, the 7th of May. If you'd like to come and visit the campus, we'd love to see you there at the open house. Um, also, we are hosting in-person tours, so you can book those as well on the Trent website. Um, there are still some other sessions starting today. Open House doesn't close until three, so please do tune into one of those. Um, and as I say, if you've missed a session that was held earlier today, then they'll all be recorded and they'll be on the website next week. Um, if you have any questions after the event, um, please do email us, discovertrent at trentu.ca. Um, and I'm also going to ask if anybody uh, in the department would like to suggest what would be the best email address for students to contact them if they have questions. That are more specific to math. And if any of you do have questions about uh, our programs, whether it's math or our specializations or financial science, you are more than welcome to email any of our professors. Uh, we all have our emails on the webpage. John and I would, would welcome emails if you have questions about our program. Uh, and we can, we're happy to talk to you one on one with details. If you're really tossing up between two programs, we can at least give you answers to your questions, which may help you make decisions. Okay, so is there is there a departmental email address? Like, is it math? There is. It's, if you just email math at trentu.ca, you will get our administrative assistant, but you are welcome to just email us directly as well if you would like, if you have questions about things. Uh, if you have questions about the financial science program, I'm the best person to contact because I wrote the proposal for it. Uh, and if you have questions about our pure math stream, John or one of our other pure math people may be slightly better, but you're all also welcome to email me and I will just forward it to them if they can answer the questions better than I can. Okay, so I've just put the math that Trent you want into the chat box. And so if, uh, sure. if I, like I say, I'm sure they'll get forwarded to the right place if that's the way they go through. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for joining us.